Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Hi. Yeah, okay, good. Good afternoon. My name is George Michelle, and I'm the head of the psychology department here at UNCG. And I'm uh, uh, standing in, in this position um, as a stand-in for the dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, who was originally to stand in for the provost of the university. Uh, some of you may have heard that the state of North Carolina is experiencing a budget crisis and um, that means that um, uh, it comes down to me to be the only person left around trying to not deal with the budget crisis but to be able to introduce this series. It's a great pleasure actually to introduce this series. Uh, um, the Kenan Smith Lecture Series is uh, more than two decades uh, old now. I think it's a, not just a significant aspect of the psychology department at UNCG, but I think it's a significant aspect of the university itself. It's a, been uh, an excellent uh, lecture series and it will continue to be an excellent lecture series. We have a wonderful program uh, uh, for you uh, these next two days. Um, my job, besides welcoming you to this uh, series, is to introduce um, Professor Walter Salinger, who was instrumental in helping to establish um, the uh, donation, uh, the organization of that money, etc., uh, for the Kendon Smith Lecture Series. And uh, I'm going to introduce him because he's going to tell you a little bit about the history of this lecture series and why it's named after Kendon Smith. Uh, so would you please welcome Professor Walter Salinger. So, hello, I'm Walter Salinger. Um, I'm here as the uh, official old guy one of the few faculty members uh, still standing among those who were in the psychology department <clears throat> before Kendon Smith retired. I've been asked to say a few words about him and about how and why the Kendon Smith lectures uh, were endowed. Now back in the olden days, the department faculty used to eat lunch together every day in a cafeteria that was run by what was then known as the Department of Nutrition and Food Service which was in what was then known as the School of Home Economics, uh, now the School of Human and Environmental Sciences. In this setting, I had a chance to get to know Kendon, in at, least, at least at an informal and social level. It was quite some time before I finally recognized that he was the Kendon Smith at, who, at Princeton, where he earned his PhD, did work that um, confirmed in vivo that von Bekeshe had actually uh, been right in explaining how the auditory system had analyzed sounds. And not entirely unrelated, uh, von Bekeshe in 1961 won the Nobel Prize in Medicine or Physiology. Put simply, Kendon started his research career with a landmark study that is to this day a canonical text uh, in the literature on auditory processes. When I asked him whether in fact he was that Kendon Smith, he seemed almost embarrassed as if he were uncomfortable with acknowledging s such a success in so public a forum as a lunch with a few colleagues at a ta table in the Home Ec cafeteria. Now before I came to UNCG, Kendon Smith had been the head of the psychology department, overseeing its transformation from a component of the School of Education to an independent department in the College of Arts and Sciences. He stepped down in the mid-60s as part of the process that led to the creation of our PhD program. By the time I had arrived, he'd had an extraordinary scholarly career um, and had graduated to dealing with the larger and more intractable questions in psychology, having recently published a major book, Behavior and Conscious Experience, A Conceptual Analysis. Uncommonly modest, he wasn't one to talk much about what he was doing or thinking. However, he was very earnestly interested in the scholarly activity of his colleagues. He had a wry, dry sense of humor and a deeply skeptical, analytic, almost clinically dispassionate approach as he assimilated one's responses to his questions. He was remarkably, at the same time, quite gentle in his manner. 
All this, despite suffering for many years from a chronic painful bone infection in his lower leg, one that finally led him to have his leg amputated. I believe it was, his, it was this unusual combination of personal and scholarly attributes that led to his having been named an alumni professor and ultimately to the endowment of the Kendon Smith Lectures, the later occasion by his retirement. And here's the story how the Kendon Smith Lectures came to be endowed. Janice Balcom, the woman who endowed the lectures, had been a student at UNCG back when it was still the Women's College. Subsequently, having married well, she had enjoyed a prosperous lifestyle that included a Learjet, thoroughbred horse farms, and a French estate on the shores of the Mediterranean Sea. Nevertheless, the life of the mind still held its attractions for her, and she came back to school. By chance, she took a biopsych course uh, for me and began working in my research lab. And the lab was populated by a large number of uh, closely knit, exceptionally bright, convivial, and deeply committed graduate and undergraduate students. Stimulated by them, she decided to apply to our doctoral program to seek her degree. Uh, she was going to work under me for her dissertation. No sooner than she was accepted to our graduate program than she announced that for business reasons, her husband was moving to Dallas, and so she couldn't take advantage of her offer. And it, after a time in Dallas, though, she contacted me to ask how she might help support the psychology department. As there was then no support whatsoever for graduate student travel to scientific meetings to present their research, I suggested that she donate money toward a travel fund for that purpose, and for a few years she did, anonymously giving uh, several thousand dollars for that purpose. Then while I was on research leave in France, she wrote saying that her experiences while studying as a psych student here led her, led her to want to make a large gift to the university to support the department's work and she asked what purpose should be specified for the gift. At that time, the university budget was dreadfully anemic, the result of a recession that although, this sounds familiar, um, <laughs> that although it was milder than the current one, created much rougher going for the university because the then governor and president were less sympathetic to the needs of higher education than those that are currently in office. One consequence was that the psych department no longer had any money reliably av available for colloquia. I explained to her how critical colloquia are for students and faculty, and she understood, but proposed instead to endow an annual lecture series rather than to fund our colloquium series. Now, her plan was that the lecture series would be endowed anonymously, and that before making the donation, she would endow the that, that would endow the series in perpetuity. She would anonymously donate around $5,982 each year. She would, of course, attend, and after each yearly lecture, uh, lecture in the series, we would discuss the details of their execution and evaluate them relative to our respective templates for such events. Once she was satisfied with the nature of the series, after about four or five years, she would make the major gift to create the permanent endowment. After we agreed on this plan, all that remained was the decision about what to call them. She proposed the Carolina uh, Psychology Lectures. As it happened, that was a period of time in which Kendon Smith had announced his intention to retire. And my senior colleagues had worked over the previous year to arrange to mark the occasion with a fest shift dedicated to him that would be published in an issue of a major journal that would be devoted to that purpose. The plan had fallen through uh, some months before, but no alternative had been explored. So I described that situation to her and she responded that during her first career as an undergraduate, Kendon had been a powerful and beloved influence in her life and in that of other students. And she leapt on the opportunity to name the series in his honor. Then after the four or five year shakedown period, she did make the magnificent donation. And during that time, I wore her down until she finally agreed to allow the community to know of her generosity in establishing the Kendon Smith Lectures. As a consequence, we are now able not only to honor the memory of the scholarly contributions of Kendon Smith with these lectures each year, but also we can express our gratitude to Janice Balcom. Indeed, I believe it's important that each year we recognize not only her exceptional generosity, but also the devotion to the life of the mind and in particular to the science of psychology that inspired and um, motivated her remarkable gift. And now, um, Heidi Gazelle will introduce this year's Kendon Smith Lectures.